you know, there's a lot of backlash from Trump's photo op that you're seeing here with him holding a Bible outside of St. John Church. There were peaceful protesters there. These folks weren't looting. They weren't tearing places up or burning down buildings. They were just peacefully protesting. And Trump had the crowd tear gassed. So a lot of people were not happy about that. Now, you, you complain that people are looting and being violent. Well, this was a crowd that was not doing any of the above. And they still got tear gassed. So, you know, there's a lot of fallout today over this. I'm going to go ahead and play this audio from NPR. The president's pose for the cameras outside a church here in Washington did not please the bishop who oversees it. Police used tear gas last evening on peaceful protesters outside the White House. They did that to clear the way for the president's photo opportunity. Afterward, Bishop Marianne Edgar Buddy, who is the leader of the Episcopal Diocese of Washington, denounced using the Episcopal Church as a backdrop. And Bishop Buddy is on the line. Good morning. Welcome to the program. Good morning. What's wrong with what the president did? Well, just listening to your summary, I think, expresses the, the dissonance and the tremendous disconnect between what churches um, are and what our sacred texts represent and the president's actions. He, he used violent means to, esc to be escorted across the park into the courtyard of the church. He held up his Bible uh, after speaking a inflammatory, a militarized approach to the wounds of our nation. Um, he did not pray. He did not offer a word of balm or condolence to those who were grieving. He did not seek to unify the country, but rather he used our symbols and our sacred space as a way to reinforce a message that is antithetical to everything that the, uh, the person of Jesus whom we follow and the gospel texts that we strive to emulate our lives. Uh, it's, pretty, it, 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 it's pretty clear, though, why he chose... Or, or his staff helped him to choose that particular church to stand in front of. Your church appears to have been targeted during the protests in the last few days. Someone set a fire, uh, not a lot of damage, but one of the rooms was set on fire in your church complex there. And the president says, I'm the president of law and order. I'm going to protect people. And he goes and stands in front of the church. Did you not see that as an attempted message of support? Uh if it was an attempted message, it did not communicate support at all. It communicated misuse. Um, look, I um, I wasn't happy about the fire. Um, the violence um, on our streets right now is heartbreaking to me. I want to keep our focus on the precipitating causes of the events of this week and to, to, to concentrate my outrage at the wrongful death of George Floyd and the string of African Americans who have preceded him in this long history of abuse and violence. I want to acknowledge the loss of property, but in no way equate it with the loss of life. I want to I want to be a church that stands in solidarity with those who are making peaceful protests. And I am grateful to the first responders who helped put out the fire in the church. And I'd like to move on and focus on the primary issues that are tearing this country apart. And, and the I want to ask didn't, the president did nothing to address any of those uh, deeper systemic concerns. And that is my that is my objection. I want to ask a little more about George Floyd. But first, you mentioned the Bible the president held up. I believe reporters shouted at him, is that your Bible? He said it is a Bible, held up the Bible for the cameras. Why does it trouble you that a politician would hold up the Bible and use it in just that way? If you were reading his Bible, if you were quoting from the Bible, one of the more inspirational passages that call us to love God and love neighbor and to seek justice, that would have been a perfectly appropriate use of our text. The Bible is meant to be studied and to be applied to life reverently and, and in, a, in a spirit of spiritual humility. But he, he seemed to use the Bible as an extension of his previous message in the Rose Garden. He, um, the, it preceded, I mean, what preceded it is, 
is also contextually significant. He, he, with use of force, cleared the area so that he could mark, walk across and hold that Bible up. It almost looked like a, um, a symbol of American military power, and I, that's a misuse of what the Bible represents. So that well, is deeply offensive to anyone who adheres to sacred scripture. Well, let me ask you as someone who has opened that book and spent a little time uh, studying it, what does your faith have to say, not to the president, but to the specific incident here, the death of George Floyd in police custody in Minneapolis, the wave of protests that have swept across the country, the violence that has taken place in Washington and other places, and specifically the people who've been standing outside your church day after day. What, what does your faith have to say to this this moment? The, our faith has many things to say uh, because it, it speaks to every dimension of the human experience. And so our, our texts would offer words of consolation to those who are grieving. Our texts would offer um, words of encouragement for those who are striving for justice. Jesus himself spoke of bringing the kingdom of God, the reign of God, God's shalom and universal love into the human experience. Uh, the, the Bible speaks of God's demand for us to walk humbly and to do justice and to love neighbor. And so all of those things are found in our texts. And those are the texts that I would point us to as a way of saying that God stands with those who are suffering. God walks with those who feel they are oppressed. And God also has... Um, harsh things to say to those of us with privilege and power who use that power to uh, be instruments of oppression for for others. And so, yes, for those in any kind of authority, we, we hear ourselves um, held in check by a higher authority. In a few seconds, uh, have you literally or metaphorically, do you, do you stand with the protesters? Absolutely. With peaceful, nonviolent protest seeking justice in our land. Bishop Buddy, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Bishop Marianne Edgar Buddy leads the Episcopal Diocese of Washington. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, this the pandemic you know, it's amazing how everybody will run to that book, the Bible. <laughs> you know, to justify why they do anything. So, you know, just looking at this picture of a president, somebody like Donald Trump holding the Bible, it's just creepy. <laughs> it is. I mean, y'all, it's creepy. You know, just take everything that you're hearing in this video with a grain of salt because you know we're in the here and now and the judgment we're still going through it'll be a lot of interesting things happening this year you know and donald trump is going to be in the midst of a lot of it to come you can tell but y'all, please tell me what you think. A lot of folks are very upset with Donald Trump and how he did this photo op by throwing tear gas at people that were no threat at all and were not causing any problems at all. But this is what he chose to do. I guess this is what he was saying, dominate, dominate, even when the situation is stupid, dominate, <laughs> dominate. Well, you dominated on peaceful protesters. I don't know. Are you supposed to feel good about this? Ah, interesting. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.